Hayes, thanks very much for joining us. You're uh, welcome. Tell us first, you look so well now. What is it like, though, to go through clinical depression? What's that like? Well, I've lived with it for so long, Sean. I mean, Matthew, my eldest, is 33, um, and it started five days after he was born. I went to bed, I was back home, and I had a panic attack. I'd never had one before. And it wasn't brought on by anything. It, I wasn't nervous or anxious about anything. And I had a massive panic attack. And when I woke, after just a couple of hours sleep, the whole lactation process had stopped. So I'd gone to bed with full breastfeeding boobs and woke up with nothing. And apparently now, that would spark a huge hormonal red flag. Nowadays, 30 years on. But at the time, the, uh, the midwife who came to look after me, the uh, community midwife, who wasn't particularly sympathetic and just said, oh, well, that doesn't normally happen unless a spouse or a baby dies. You better go out and get some bottles. And my mum, who was a psychiatric nurse, um, said, you don't feel depressed, do you? And I said, no, I don't feel depressed. Everything just feels very weird, as if, it's, as if there's a dream sequence happening and I'm looking outside, looking in. Mm. And that was the start of it. And then I was in what I would call the blackness. And you did something that made such a difference to so many people as well, Denise, when you... Because you look so well now, and, and I imagine a lot of the reaction will be, but she looks so well. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you were going through an episode, a three-day episode of, of depression, you chronicled it, you filmed it, and we're just going to have a little okay. look now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those who um, know me and follow me know that I describe it as the unwelcome visitor, and he's here. He's not in my house, he's at my sister's house. But the, he can find you anywhere, or she. And um, I have to wait for him to go. I have to wait for him to go. Yeah. It sounds... I mean, what's it like, firstly? Looking well, back the reason that? why it was a very impulsive decision to do that, it's very weird hearing that back, because it's so hard for me to remember, but... Like you said, because I look well, and people always say, well, what... You, you can't see depression. That's why it's such a crippling, isolating, frightening, debilitating condition, because it's invisible. You mm -hmm. can't see it. And there's photographs of me that are like this <laughs> at a party, and I'll remember how poorly I was at that time. So because I was always talking about it in the past tense, something in me made me pick up the phone and I chronicled a three-day um, three episode. And the thing about depression which describes it to those who've never had it, and I would be the first person that wouldn't, you know, it, I, I'd never judge anybody who doesn't understand it as long as they're willing to try to, mm -hmm. is that depression is exactly what it says on the tin. It depresses every single emotion in you. So. It's often described as sadness. It's not sadness. Sadness is an emotion you are meant to feel as a result of being made sad about something. And actually, in all the clinical journals, as a psychologist, it says persistent sadness. And what you're saying is it's an absence of feeling. Sean, I'm so glad, as a psychologist, that you said that. I can't feel anything in a depression. I used to say this, which is a pretty harsh analogy, but if someone had knocked on the door and I'd opened it and they'd said... I don't know what your dream thing would be, but you've won 80 million on the lottery and all your, all your financial worries are over forever. Or if they'd said, your whole family have been wiped out in an aircraft disaster. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nada. It depresses everything. It completely robs you of emotion. When you say that the unwelcome visitor, who's, I mean, who's a man, I don't know whether that makes any... Whether there's a specific reason for it being I mean, a man these or days you probably shouldn't be or... gender specific, but you know, I've had this for 30 years and I just used to refer to my unwelcome visitor as a he. Yeah. Perhaps that's because I thought of him as a bogeyman and a monster and all of those things that we had childhood. But naming it also puts it outside yourself, doesn't mm. it? It means that, that actually you can create a distance between you and it. Be it's because this creature could enter my home, it could enter this studio, it could enter the last time I had it. I was driving up to the northeast with my son's godchildren in the car and my, you know, one of my best friends, Lisa, we were all singing songs and I got to the Angel of the North and I get a tingling in my palms and a metallic taste in my mouth and within 30 seconds, the unwelcome visitor is there. And all I say to people is, he will always leave. 
That's what you have to try and think to get... My mum used to say to me, you will get better. She told me later on in life, she didn't always know, but I needed her to say to me, you will get better. And I always say to people, the unwelcome visitor will always leave. Once he's in and shuts the door, you have to just tolerate his existence, but he will always leave. I was looking at something the other day. You'd posted a couple of pictures of yourself, 10 years apart, 10 years sober. Mm. Congratulations Thank for that. Thank you so much. Oh, it's close. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> None of us like looking at yeah. ourselves. But look at your eyes in this one compared to that one. That's what I said in my post. I mm. said, it's in the eyes. And the reason I've got, as we all have, much more glamorous, professionally made up pictures than that, but I wanted it to be a normal selfie type of picture to show um, the, you know, the difference. And again, people used to look at me when I was poorly and when I was drinking, and it was just a deadness in, in my eyes. And mm. the greatest gift of sobriety is the gift it's given to my children and to the people who love me. I think there will be a lot of people who will be going through something similar because depression and living with depression is always different for, for each individual. But we'll be watching you and, and getting so much heart and hope from what you're saying. And a saying. lot of people will hopefully understand why they self-medicate with alcohol and some, you know, sometimes drugs. Denise, what would you say to anyone who's watching this tonight who might be struggling? Talk to them down the camera. To anyone who's struggling with depression <clears throat> or self-medicating their depression, there is help out there. I'm nearly 64. It's never too late to turn your life around is my motto. Talk to someone. You'll be surprised how many people know exactly what you're talking about. If you want to go on Google, if you live in Leicester, for example, Google depression groups in Leicester, help with alcohol. Honestly, there is always a support group out there. And look at me. I feel better now as an old bird than I did for the last 40 years. So good luck. And um, I'm thinking of you. Denise, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.